What's up everybody, it's Charles, and today we're gonna to go into the transmission on the GTI, the VR6 Turbo build, do some evaluation, and prep it for installing a limited slip differential. One of the biggest issues after turbocharging the car I experienced was not getting any traction. So to fix that problem, I got a limited slip differential that we're going to install in the transmission. But first we have to remove the transmission, of course, and then disassemble it. And this is the perfect time to do a handful of other things. One, do a full inspection on all of the gears and make sure we don't have any issues there. Two, inspect the clutch. Due to the clutch fork issues that we were having beforehand, inspecting the clutch is gonna be very important here. And of course, installing the upgraded clutch fork to replace the one that was bent. After draining the fluid and removing the transmission, the first inspection up was checking the clutch. And unfortunately, she's not a happy camper. As you can see all around the friction disc, all around the pressure plate and the flywheel, these are hot spots due to the clutch slipping. And I think the clutch was slipping for a couple of reasons. The clutch for it being bent did cause some issues with drivability and clutch slippage. And two, and really I think the one that's more important is this clutch just didn't really have enough clamping force to hold the horsepower of the car. This is a stage two clutch. And the guys at Black Forest did tell me, Charles, this is not gonna be enough clutch for you but me being stubborn me, I went with it anyway because I wanted that really good balance of drivability and clamping force, and it looks like we'll be moving up to stage three in order to get a little bit better clamping force to hold this horsepower. While I wasn't planning for it, I'm also not super surprised that we're going to be putting a new clutch in it. Going into it, this transmission didn't really have any drivability issues. Went into gear perfectly every time, no noise, no grinding, but because we have it apart, this is the perfect time to do a very thorough inspection looking at every gear, every tooth, every synchronizer, every bearing to make sure that we don't have any issues now or to make sure that we can't prevent some sort of other catastrophic failure down the road. When we drain the fluid, it was dirty. I'm going to almost guarantee this fluid had never been changed at any point in this car's life which makes sense because, well, it doesn't have a service interval. So getting this old nasty fluid out was a good thing no matter what. On the case and on the gears, you can see how nasty that fluid got and how it started to break down and coat all of these parts. So for the parts that we don't replace, we will be cleaning them and flushing clean good fluid through it to make sure that any debris or contamination is removed and we're not putting back a gear that's dirty in a rebuilt transmission that can cause problems. On looking at all the gears and moving all the bearings, I didn't really find anything that jumped out at me until I hit second gear. Second gear synchro, I wiggled it around. I'm like, holy cow, this is really loose. Luckily, it turns out this is a multiple piece synchronizer. So some of that is normal, but that did prompt me to look a bit closer at the gears. And if you look really close, you can see where the transmission has been grinding a little bit, going into second gear. And I think that's all due to our clutch failing and our bent clutch fork. So I shopped around, I found a couple places that do make upgraded gears for this transmission. I've reached out to them, so we're kind of in a limbo state. I'm also seeing how much a rebuild VW transmission is gonna be. These gear sets can get very expensive very fast, in addition to adding on bearings and everything like that. It may come dangerously close to a reman transmission, but we're gonna kind of have to wait and see just what we need to do for that. If I had my way, I would just get some higher quality gears and synchros and put it all back together because that also means I get to get a press for the shop, which I'm a fan of. And of course, we're installing the limited slip. You can see it right here. This is also cool because it has a nice metal gear for the speedometer to replace the nylon one on the original diff, which it's pretty common to have those crack and then your speedometer gets all squirrely. Even though it's an electric signal, it is mechanically driven. The worst part of this entire limited slip job, which I will be covering the DIY in another video, but I wanted to show you guys this teardown and some of the things that I found in this transmission. The worst part is going to be drilling out the rivets. If you were going to sublet anything to anyone on this job, it would be that. Probably 40, 50, 60 bucks at a machine shop. I think it would be well worth it. And you may, depending on the quality drill bits you get, you might end up spending that much money in drill bits anyway. So something you may wanna consider would be having taking that somewhere, having the rivets drilled out so that you can install the ring gear on the limited slip differential. Right now, it's kind of a waiting game to price check a few things, see what it's gonna to cost to get all this stuff cleaned up and replaced as needed. 
Again, I don't want to put parts that are questionable back in the transmission. The technician in me says, Charles, replace that second gear and the set with it. My wallet, on the other hand, says, nah, dude, it's cool. Put it back in. So we'll see, uh, we'll see which one of those two wins out. But again, by the time you add up all the costs of replacing parts, cleaning everything, new bearings, which we would have to get a different set of bearings for the limited slip anyway, it may come dangerously close to, uh, to the price of a reman VW, which then would immediately be disassembled in order to install the limited slip. I know it's been a long time since we did a VR6 Turbo The White Wookiee update, but now we're at a point where I can actually show you something rather than are just sitting over here on the lift. This is pretty cool stuff, and it's going to be interesting to see just what we can find and cobble together in order to get a, maybe a little bit better quality transmission and, of course, some traction <laughs> when we get it back together and put that, what I'm going to assume is a little over 300 wheel horsepower, uh, to the actual ground, which it doesn't do you any good if you can't get it to the ground. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. If you want to see more of the GTI videos, hit that playlist. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all the other social platforms. Sorry it took so long for this update, but R32 life, right? And then now we've added a Mark V project as well. So guys, with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you again next time.